Honorable viewers, I welcome all of you to my YouTube channel, Department of English. Today's topic is Preface to Shakespeare, written by Johnson. Johnson describes merits and demerits of Shakespeare's plays. So let's start. Samuel Johnson was born on the 18th September 1709. He published a pump held on Shakespeare's Macbeth. His preface to Shakespeare is one of the finest critical works in the history of English literature. Merits and demerits of Shakespeare's plays are the sea focus of preface to Shakespeare. There is a general comment about the repetition of the writers in paragraph 1 and 2. It is said that antiquity is the basis of judging the authors and their works. Prices go to the dead, dead authors. Dead and ancient authors are respected and admired. Antiquity is assessed. Living authors are criticized, but dead authors are praised highly. Shakespeare has acquired the dignity of an ancient author. He has been sussed by time and antiquity. The honors due only to excellence are paid to antiquity. Shakespeare is completely an impartial, impartial writer all over the world. He is completely neutral in his making character. He has said well actually what is well. At the same time, in the same way he has said bad in fact what is bad. There is no partiality in his writing. He has maintained godlike detachment. God has created both good and bad. He could create all well. But he couldn't that because of the detestment. We see this quality in correct in Chaucer. Shakespeare creates logo what logo is. He creates Othello what he is. John Keats says it negative capability. Keats was a true follower of Shakespeare. Shakespeare has not exaggerated his characters. He has presented his characters as they are. Shakespeare has flourished English language. He has created universal characters. He has written the finest sonnets in English. He has written various kinds of plays like history play, tragedy, comedy and tragic, tragic comedy. Johnson prefers to Shakespeare is a great contribution to English criticism. According to Johnson, Shakespeare is the poet who holds up to his readers a faithful mirror of manners and life. Shakespeare characters do not belong to the society of a particular place or time. They are universal, representing every man. His characters have a universal appeal. Hamlet. Macbeth, Cordelia, Rosalind, Orlando, and many others are unforgetful because of their universal appeal. Shakespeare plays upper faithful pictures of real life. A faithful representation is a source of pleasure to many people and thus a representation continues to give pleasure. God. Nothing can please, please many and please long, but just representations of general nature. He may be regarded as a great playwright for his realistic quality of dialogues. The dialogue in his plays is out of common conversation and common occurrences. In a majority of the dramas, love is the universal agent, but Shakespearean plays 
love is not the only passion it is just on among the the many his characters are not overstated he has kept his characters distinct from one another he does not give us purely ver- virtuous or utterly immortal characters he has emphasized one the general human nature he is one of the greatest poets of nature whose plays hold the mirror to the life and manners of all times shakespeare is more than modern writer the poet of nature he holds up to his readers a faithful mirror of manners and of life his characters are the authentic product of common humanity his characters are the genuine progeny of common humanity quote shakespeare is above all writers at least above all modern writers and the poet of nature his plays are informative and instructive most of his plays are devoid of persical overstated and ridiculous which confuse our imagination johnson agrees that shakespeare's plays are either comedies or tragedies almost all his plays have serious as well as strange characters and thus sometimes cause seriousness and sorrow and sometimes humor and laughter shakespeare mingling of tragic and comic elements give greater pleasure because pleasure consists in variety he has showed what wide knowledge of human nature and psychology shakespeare's plays are full of practical axioms or proverb and domestic wisdom he is the originator of the from the character the language and the shows of english drama the plays of shakespeare are not strictly speaking either tragedies or comedies shakespeare's plays are not in the rigorous and critical sense either tragedies or comedies but composition of a distract guy Johnson does not consider Shakespeare to be a faultless dramatist. His first defect is that he sacrifices virtue to convenience. He tries more to please his audience than to instruct them. To Johnson, the most objectionable of all the faults of Shakespeare is his indifference to morality poetry should be morality morally instructive shakespeare's plots are often very loosely formed and carelessly pursued the play julius caesar early clearly shows a decline of shakespeare dramatic interest in his its second half he has violated the chronology shakespeare seems to write without any moral purpose cold he sacrifices virtue to convenience and is so much more careful to plays than to instruct that he seems to write without any moral purpose his plays also have faults of dialogue and diction the God's sense of conversation in his plays cannot be approved. It is the writer's duty to make suitable selection in the forms of fun. His plays are full of verbose and obscure language. He has over fondness for quibbles. To Johnson, Shakespeare doesn't observe poetic justice. He has 
violated the three grammatic unities. His style is ungrammatical and obscure. According to Johnson, Shakespeare himself is responsible for his obscurity. The style of Shakespeare is in itself ungrammatical, perplexed and obscure. Even Shakespeare's plays also have faults of dialogue and diction. He often loses the heights of poetic loftiness by the use of some idle conceit or poor gain. Quote, the style of Shakespeare was in itself ungrammatical, perplexed, and obscure. Frankly speaking, Shakespeare has observed the unity of action. He plays have beginning, a middle, and end as laid down by Aristotle. Shakespeare had no consideration for the unities of time and place. He was indifferent to unities of time and place. The key fault of Shakespeare plays is the violation of chronology or his indifference to historical accuracy. Shakespeare's aim was to place his audience. Shakespeare is a master of characterization. His characters are not exaggerated. Quote, Other dramatists can only gain attention by hypro, hyperbolical or aggravated characters by fabulous and unexampled excellence. Naturally, of the characters is the chief concern of Shakespeare. His characters are not artificial. Another allegation against Shakespeare has been brought that he was careless enough to mix tragedy and comedy in the same play. But this allegation cannot be real. Mixer of tragic and comic elements has added a new dimension in the new kind of drama. In Shakespeare's plays, there is no just distribution of evil and good. His virtuous characters do not always show a disapproval of the wicked ones. Even his virtuous character turns into villain. Macbeth is a such kind of character. Shakespeare characters pass through right and wrong indifferently. Shakespeare's plots are often loosely neat and carelessly developed. In many of his plays, the later part appears to have been neglected. No authors in the history of English literature kept his characters more distinct from each other than Shakespeare does. Shakespeare is different he does not discuss the natural passions of human nature. His characters are the mirror of real life. Quote, Shakespeare was the man who of all modern and perhaps ancient poets had the largest and most comprehensive soul. That's all about today's topic. Preface to Shakespeare for the timing. Thanks for your patience hearing.